Greetings, sir and sir, and welcome from the depths with me, Lathra, and of course with the sandbox mode, in which we are having a, at the new ship, Rails. With that silliness out of the way, here we are in the sandbox mode with our newest creation, which isn't exactly finished yet, which will be the last from scratch build of the campaign. We have got to the point where the new builds just aren't really worth the time since the campaign is certainly now coming to a close. So I thought, let's just have a bit of fun with railguns, have a bit of fun with lasers, and make a battleship. Since I haven't built a proper ship in quite a while, a lot of airships, a lot of other things, especially in live streams, building just weird little tanks and things. We haven't just sat down and built something ship-like. In a game about battles on the ocean, you would think ships would be more used. So currently, the weapons we have are a very, very powerful laser system, which is being shared throughout the craft, which really needs more engine power. At the moment, we are sitting at less than 200,000, and we need maybe 400, 500,000 in total. But even with just the amount we currently have, it's a really, really brutal system. We have even been able to kill the Bloodhound in a very basic test in under 30 seconds, which is pretty impressive considering how tanky the Bloodhound actually is. With the Railguns, we are still using 8 meter shells, similar to our recent aircraft build. However, these fire much faster, and the shells themselves are also, believe it or not, a little bit quicker. The thing is, though, these shells are very, very different. They are a little bit more basic, but pack a lot more of a punch. They are almost completely warheads, and they are Hesh and Frag shells, which is kind of weird, but kind of glorious. Able to one-shot very large opponents sometimes by causing a ridiculous amount of internal damage. And because there's so many warheads with the high explosives and the frags, and then the inertial fuse, even double-layered shields seem to have a tough time keeping these things back. So, 1,300 meters per second shells that can deal with shields? Yep, check, and I am very pleased with them. We'll, we will be doing a proper test later once everything is working. We also have a tiny little hidden missile system. Because who doesn't love tiny little hidden missile systems? But sadly, the back section is... Not exactly done yet, so I'll be right back once there's been a few updates and maybe we can test this thing out. I'm really hoping by the end of the video we can get into the campaign, but there are still many hours of building left, so we will see. I thought I should showcase the firepower at the moment. Even the rails aren't currently functioning at their full capacity because of the lack of engine power. Also, we can't stay afloat because there's a giant hole in its butt. Which could be expected of a butt to be on it. Okay, let's just continue. So, an idea for the name before we actually get back to building. Hurrah for all the distractions. The Nihiliv. For some reason it makes me think of Mirrors, but I really do like this name. It's a very good guy name. Prefabs can cause some... interesting glitches. Behold the power of Zinch! His magic will aid us. I can't even remember the prefab actually having this piece attached. Well, that apparently happened. It was that block the entire time. The final shape of the ship is finally getting close to being finished. So, what we have on the front is these three lovely weapons. Two of the railguns, and then one of the laser turrets. And then on the back, we have the single laser turret already installed. Now, both of these laser sections are going to be sharing the same laser system. This means that when they're both firing, the damage is essentially being split between the two, and then when one's firing, it's a 
little bit more concentrated. That may sound like a bad thing, but with how much damage these lasers do, it's completely fine to separate them into two and simply share them with so many firing pieces. In fact, it seems to be way more effective. The side guns, the side lasers, the broadside lasers, there's the word, are now on a completely separate laser system. A third laser system will be added soon as a form of defense, a munition defense against missiles and shells, which will be one of the final things we do. Now the thing is, I'm not sure how we're going to finish the back and how we're going to finish the top. Originally, this section here was going to be for a command bridge, but we are really running out of volume. 50,000 is the maximum I want this ship to get to, and we're already on about 41, 42,000, which really doesn't give us much room. So I think we'll do the, the top section last to see if I do have any spare volume, and the back we'll do first. The question is, do I want a minigun, do I want a disrupt around triple barrel, or do I just want missiles? I do like missiles, and they are very compact. What do you think, the Eye of Zinch? Okay, so a slight problem. We have already hit the 50,000 volume mark. This is already a very, very large amount of volume, and I really don't want to go over that, because at that point, it's just getting to the level where this vehicle will start winning purely off of size. Honestly, that's already a danger. That's why, until now, I've been very careful to, at absolute maximum, have a volume of 40,000, so that the battle were a little bit more fair, and that's just part of the honour rules which I imposed on myself. Since this is the last creation I'm making, I don't mind adding 10,000 more to that, since so far we haven't really had too many issues with the Scarlet Dawn. But even with that, going any larger just seems a bit... unfair, even by, by that standard. So I think I'm going to need to do is redesign a couple of sections, mostly the front section. Almost all of this is essentially wasted space. There's very little on the inside here, as the laser components are in the center and along these two sides, with the front here just being added armor and a little bit of added stability. So, removing all of this, then adding more of a sloped front to it, cutting off all the bottom section, and maybe making it a little bit stubbier as well. Which is a shame, because honestly, I actually really like how that front section looks. After that, we can narrow this centerpiece. Again, a lot of wasted space there and there. And perhaps we can even bring in the back a little bit, thinning it out and making it a bit shorter. Now, before we go ahead and start the major redesigns, which are going to take a while and honestly be incredibly boring even by my standards, let's test out the lasers. I am under no illusion that most likely there's going to be a whole host of flaws with them, but that's why we do testing. So, what I think is we're going to test it out versus the singularity as soon as I make the ship more buoyant again. Okay, now we're somewhat stable, and let's spawn in the Singularity. Now, the reason why we're using the Singularity and not any of the other designs is that now we've fought it a few times, I don't feel too bad using it in the sandbox mode, but also, it's a little bit unique in terms of having very heavily varied areas of laser defense. On the front, it's incredibly effective at warding off lasers, but on the side and the back, it actually seems quite vulnerable. So if we're lucky, we get to see the lasers in their best situation and at their worst. So here we go, let's spawn it in and let's see how we do. There it is, it spawned just over there. For some reason I thought it was going to spawn on the other side. Clearly incorrect. And that is a lot of damage, absolutely melting through the armor. And it's going down. The rails have been practically turned off for this test, that's why they're moving so slowly. I've turned off their rail overclock. Okay, that didn't really get to the phase of showing off the front section. It just went through and cut... Yeah, it's cut all the way through and destroyed both of the battery compartments. 
That was definitely a best case scenario. That is not a real good judgement of the laser's damage or the singularity's effectiveness. That's just, oh look, we're hitting the weak point with what it's weak against. Either way though, missiles! <laughs> Either way though, very, very happy with the performance, at least in terms of brute damage. So, with that in mind, I know that the lasers can stay at their current size, and now it's time to do some editing. <laughs> this is what happens when the back section is basically a giant hole. <laughs> After a little while of mulling it over, I've decided we are not going to be reducing the volume by a drastic amount. In fact, we're likely going to be increasing it slightly over the course of the build. The reason is, this is the final design, the last build of the campaign. I feel like we've almost won already, and most of the excess volume is honestly just that. It's volume we don't need being used rather stupidly. For instance, all of these armor caps around the proper armor cap of the turret is just not needed. It's there for aesthetic and it's adding up to a lot of volume. We also have a lot of dead space at the front, dead space at the back. It's all because I want this vehicle to look a lot like the Plague Guard. So when they're used together, they sort of look like they are meant to be together in a fleet. And because of that, it's going to be very high in volume. Now saying that, I have made some steps to reduce the volume, so already we are down to 45,000, but we are definitely going to go above the 50,000 limit, maybe just scraping 60,000. And thanks to the new method of the game, where there's far higher volume per battle, I don't really see that being a massive advantage to this ship. I just feel like it's going to be swarmed by far superior tech on the enemy team. So hopefully, we'll still have some fun matches with it, and it's going to be a bit of a trophy vessel. I don't know what you're talking about. Clearly this copy and paste worked absolutely perfectly. Behold the power of Zinch in all of its floaty glory. It lives! Okay, the very basic AI is now in place, and I've started work on the back section. And that's a real shame. Apparently you can't see these lasers when you're above the water, so I will have to move those a little bit higher. The idea is we're cutting into the back here so that A, it's far less volume, and B, it's going to massively increase the surface area. This way we can add some internal rotors, we can add propellers, and ultimately it will make the ship able to turn a lot faster. I don't really care about how fast it goes forwards and backwards, but being able to turn quickly is going to be so important considering the amount of broadside damage this can do and the fact that there's a good chance that one half will take damage but the other half will be fine so being able to quickly turn to compensate for that will be very very important. Also, I just think it looks interesting. This is the type of armor I want to cover the entire ship once we start modeling it a little bit more. At the moment we're still in the functional elements. Soon, I'll make it look pretty-ish. Lathrixian pretty, which isn't really pretty, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, need to move those lasers up. Also, probably going to cut off the very ends of these two sections. More of the movement has now been added. We have pitch controls, we have roll controls, we have a load of altitude adjusters, and honestly, it's now incredibly difficult to sink. And with all the different mechanics keeping this thing afloat, actually quite low in the water intentionally, it's essentially a sub. It would take no effort at all to turn this into a sub at this point, just really changing a few numbers. So let's get it to move so I can showcase the fact it can actually move. There we are, slightly higher in the water upon movement, and that's it. It's actually surprisingly quick as well. It's decent at turning, it's fast-ish for its weight. Yeah, I'm actually surprisingly happy with this. So let's go into combat mode. Let's just summon in something simple like the plunderer. The railguns have been sped up, as you can probably tell, already hitting the target there. 
And yeah, everything is working as intended. I think the broadside needs to be altered a little bit though. It looks like we're going in a little bit sharper than I would like. Honestly, if we were perfectly parallel to the enemy, that would be perfect. Taking a couple of cram shannon cannon shots there, nothing too special. Or cram shannon. Please don't fire people called shannon from cannons, it's really rude. Missiles are actually long enough range for that. That is pretty good. A lot of lag right now, but that's just because I've been in, in the sandbox mode for so long. After a certain amount of time, from the depths, seems to slowly lock up. Okay, more updates soon. We're getting there. In fact, we are actually really, really close now. Before I do restart the game, however, there is one thing I need to randomly talk about briefly, and that is this section at the back. What are we going to use it for? Right now, all the space underneath here is already being used up by laser systems and by a few engines. There really isn't any extra space to use for a regular advanced cannon or something like that. So really, the choices are a very, very small particle cannon, a very small, probably minigun style advanced cannon, a decent sized cram cannon, or yet another laser system. I have also separated the laser systems between the three major laser weapons at the moment, so yay for redundancy. But I guess I could share one of them with here, and then we just have a separate turret which is using the laser system, so if the other turret gets knocked out, it's still being useful. That would be the easiest to, Im to implement, because thankfully these turrets are tiny. They're essentially just this cap here, and then a little bit inside the armour, because then it attaches via the transceivers to the other lasers. Is it called a transceiver? What is it actually called? Let's find out, shall we? Oh, it is called a transceiver. Well, I was correct. It's weird, isn't it? Okay, that was decent. Not quite as good as I was expecting, but decent nonetheless. So one other idea for this section is to house one of the point defense systems. Now, it didn't really have enough space for an oversized ah, laser system like I wanted, but this works. I've also gone a little bit over the top with all these laser sections here, which does actually make it weaker since it spams so much, but it definitely functions. Not quite as good as the Medran Guards though, but to be fair, the Medran Guards costs maybe three times as much and spans half of the front of the hull. This is a box. It's my laser box. I like my laser box. Still, works out pretty well, especially against scram cannons. Thank you to the... What are you called? The crossbones for that test. Here are some friendly lasers. And rail explosions, of course. Did you know that missiles and lasers can cause things to fly? You do now. You're welcome, internet. Well, sadly, I am running out of time. Building this craft is taking all day, so it's almost finished. All it needs is a bit of polish at the back, it needs to look a little bit prettier at the front, and it needs its shields and detection systems. Outside of that, it is practically done. It has nasty lasers, it has a lovely missile swarm, and it has rail guns. What more could you want from a craft? other than the ability to build drones, and I was so tempted to do that, but this thing already eats resources for breakfast, so don't really want to do that any more than I have to. So to finish off, we're going to have a little battle between the Malal's Will, the, fi the final version of the Malal's Will, since there's three versions of them now, versus our newest craft. Now that everything's reloaded, let's go ahead and do the final test. Now honestly, there really shouldn't be any way that the Malal's Will will have victory here. It costs 400,000 less and around about 15,000 less volume, so it's really not a fair fight. This is more testing out the defences without shields of the Nihiliv, and most importantly testing out those lovely, lovely lasers. And of course, railguns. All of the fun weapons. Okay, both on at the same time. Both of them are not aiming yet. And begin! 
Oh, that rail shot, though, absolutely devastating the front. And the Malal's will is dead. Okay, maybe one more test against something with non-wooden armor. Still, though, I think that was worth it just for seeing that one rail shot and half of the front just going everywhere. Behold the Medring Guard, now in Deepwater Guard colors and already firing its particle cannon because I forgot to turn it off fast enough. I wonder how much internal damage that's done. That is a piercing shot. Anyway, let's see how this goes. Honestly, I still think the new ship should win. It has far more firepower and the Medring Guard isn't the best against lasers. It does have smoke, but nowhere near enough. Yeah, some of those lasers, as you can see by them going thinner, are being affected by smoke and anti-laser shields. However, yep, yeah, that is a lot of internal damage done straight away. The Medrin Guard backing off as it always does. Those missiles probably won't reach. Oh, railgun shot going straight through the shields there and crushing the side. Here come the missiles. Oh, it's turned off its laser defense. I don't quite know how that's happened, that's... I've never actually seen that happen before with the Medrin Guard. Yeah, just melting through even the heavy armor there, and the Medrin Guard has been defeated. It's really sad using the, the Medrin Guard for, for anything like this. It's still an unfinished craft, that's the funny thing. The Medrin Guard was definitely one of the more difficult crafts I've ever built, but... It's also one of the most unfinished because I just stopped using it, so the need to update it became less and less and less. I will have to update it in a, in a live stream or something in the not so distant future. Why was I not on the Nihilive? There we go. Lost like 1% health from the cannons and the particle cannon. I think this will do just fine. So with that, I'm afraid I really am all out of time for today's video. I really wanted to get into the campaign, but it's been way too long since I've posted the From the Depths video, so this needs to come out now. Hopefully this is before the end of the weekend, otherwise you can yell at me. So if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we introduce the Nihilev to the Scarlet Dawn. I also still have no idea how to pronounce this thing's name. Weird, that.